let's talk a bit more about economics. And we remember the oil shock and um, the reactions to the oil shock then in, in uh, Europe there was a move to make low energy buildings and for buildings to use less, more if more insulation, more efficiency. Um, in Japan, the result of the oil shock was the electrical goods and also cars became much more efficient. So a lot of effort was put into efficiency. Um, so let's look today um, we have here country A and country B. Um, country A uses 43 gigajoules of energy per household for heating. Country B uses only 10 gigajoules per household. And uh, for hot water, lighting, appliances, country A only uses 19 gigajoules, whereas country B uses 33 gigajoules. Um, one of these countries is Japan. One of these is a country in Europe. Which is which? Which one is country A? Which one is country B? Um, now, you may be thinking that um, the country that put all the effort into low energy building and energy efficiency in buildings uses less energy for heating. And you may think that the country that put its efforts into efficient devices and efficient electronic goods has much less energy use for hot water and lighting and appliances. Um, but this is not what happened. Uh, Germany uses about four times more energy for heating than Japan. And uh, Japan uses about one and a half times more energy for hot water and lighting and appliances. Um, there may, of course, be um, other reasons for this. Why do you think this is? Um, so why is Germany, with its low energy buildings, why does it use so much more energy for heating? And Japan, with its high efficiency appliances... Why does it use more energy um, for these things, for hot water and lighting and appliances? Um, there may be differences in climate. There may be cultural differences with hot water use. Um, I think also there's what's known as um, Jevons paradox. Um, and this tells us that more efficiency will lead to more consumption. So if you become more efficient you don't use less, you use more. Um, and I'll just try and explain this. Um, he was a 19th century economist and he was looking at steam engines. Um, he saw that as the steam engines become more efficient, um, they start to be used more. Um, this is a picture of a steam engine being pulled by a horse and a carriage, which looks very funny to us now. Um, of course, the early steam engines were less efficient than horses. And um, the reason why we started using steam engines is because they became more efficient than horses and cheaper to run. Um, so off, off that goes. Um, in comes Watt's steam engine. Um, and this is the, one of the early steam engines... Um, what it's doing is it's pumping, it's using coal to make steam, it's using steam to pump water. Um, it's pumping water out of the coal mine. And because the water's pumped out, you can dig out more coal. And then you can keep using in more engines to make more steam. Um, and this um, improved efficiency meant uh, they could get more coal. Um, getting more coal made more money. Um, more money led to more efficiency. Um, more efficiency means that you can use more machines. More people can use steam engines. People can use trains. People can use steam to power their machines and their factories. Um, and this leads to more efficiency. More coal is used. Um, more money is made. 
and this is a, a cycle that just leads to more and more being used. Um, just another, let's look at an, another example of where we might see um, Jevons paradox in play. And let's just imagine that you have a business with vending machines. So you own um, some of these vending machines, you have them around the city. Um, and in order to run a business, you need to think about your costs and your income. So how much money are you spending on your business? Um, this is going to be a cost per machine. Every machine you have is going to cost a certain amount of money. Um, also, every drink, every drink that you sell, you need to buy. Um, and you have income as well. And so there's some kind of balance of expenses and income. Um, so for every drink that you have in one of your vending machines, you need to buy the drink and somebody needs to go to take the drink, fill up the machine with the drinks. Um, there's also um, a fixed cost per machine. Uh, you need to buy the machine. You need to maybe maintain the machine. Uh, you need to rent. You might need to put the machine somewhere on somebody's land and you may need to pay them rent for your machine. Um, and also you need electricity for cooling and heating the machine. Um, you have what's called a break-even point. Um, now, if your income is more than your expenses, if you're getting more money coming in than the money that you're paying out, then that's good news. You have some profit. Um, if it's the opposite, if you're paying more money than you're getting in, that's bad news. You don't have a business. Um and the point at which expenses are the same as income, this is called the break-even point. Um, so, how much electricity do we need for one of these um, vending machines? What's the heating and cooling cost? Um, uh, you can estimate this in kilowatt hours per year. If you'd like to go and uh, estimate that. Um, here's my estimate. Um, this is, so this is an example of the monthly payment for your vending machine business. Um, this is looking per machine. Um, it probably costs you about 50 yen for each drink that you buy. Um, each machine, you maybe need to spend 10,000 yen for rent to use the space to put your machine somewhere. Use your vending machine. Um, maybe maintenance is included in that. Um, electricity. Um, vending machines use 7 to 14 kilowatt hours per day. Um, that's probably more than your room. Um, and this will cost about 10,000 yen per month for heating and cooling, keeping the drinks cool or keeping them hot. Um the income then you may be able to sell a drink for 150 yen per drink and so we can work out the break even point if if the number of drinks um is if we're making more money than we're costing then we need the n to be at least do we need to sell at least 200 drinks from our vending machine to um to make money so the question for your business is um, where do you put your machines? So you need to put your vending machine somewhere where you can sell more than 200 drinks per month, um, according to our, our quick estimate. Um, and of course, if you're in a university campus with students coming every day, that may be a very good place to put your vending machine. Um, if it's somewhere in the country, on the corner of a road, which 10 people go past every day, it may be not such a good place to put your vending machine. Um, but um, here are some lessons from 20th century economics. Um, often, people are not rational. People in economics make decisions 
that are sometimes not good decisions, not sensible decisions. Um, if you give people a way to spend money, then some people will spend their money. It may not be the best way for them to spend their money, um, but they will do it if the option is there. Um, if you put a vending machine somewhere, um, some people will buy drinks from the vending machine. Um, and if the energy efficiency gets better, if we have a more efficient machine, we use less electricity. Um, this means our monthly cost is less. And this means the break even point goes down. So we maybe only need to sell 150 drinks a month. Um, and what this means then is we can start putting our vending machine maybe before it wasn't worth putting a vending machine on the corner of this road because we're not going to get 200 people buying drinks per month. But maybe the efficiency goes, goes up. We get a better, more efficient vending machine. Our monthly costs come down. And now suddenly it's worth putting a vending machine on this corner and maybe on this corner and maybe next to this shop. Um, and what this means is that if we have a more efficient vending machine, we can put vending machines in more places. And if we put more vending machines in more places, we're going to use more power. So this means more efficiency makes more power use, not less power use. So this is um, Jevons paradox, which tells us that more efficiency will lead to more power use. Um, and this is something we need to think carefully about when we're making a more efficient building, when we're trying to make low energy. Um, so let's just think about a traditional building then. Uh, there's almost no insulation in the walls. Uh, let's make it a small building with a small area, 35 square meters. And let's say we've got 100 square meters of walls. Um, and the heating per year, if it's 80 kilokelvin hours per year, then this is going to be 8,000 kilowatt hours per year heating. Um, which will cost us about 80,000 yen if we're buying kerosene at 10 yen per kilowatt hour or whatever we're using for heating. Um, however, um, if we have a, a traditional building, um, we probably won't heat the whole house and we won't heat it for the whole time. So in fact, our heating bill maybe more like 20,000 yen rather than 80,000 yen. Um, we're not going to heat the house when we're not at home. Um, we may just want to heat one room or one area. We may use a kotatsu, so we're just heating the part of the room where we're sitting. Um, so we could heat the whole house for 80,000 yen. We probably won't. We'll probably just heat it for 20,000 yen. Um, if we add some insulation to our house, let's say we put a little bit, get the U value down to 0.25. Um, the heating loss will then be 2000 kilowatt hours per year. Um, and this works out to 20,000 yen per year if we're paying 10, year, 10 yen per kilowatt hour. Um, so we now have a warm house. Um, we haven't actually saved any money because we're still spending the same on heating that we did with our traditional house with no insulation. It's just now that the house is warm the whole time. So this is probably more comfortable. Our house is probably nicer now, um, but we're, we're not any richer. And in fact, we may be a bit poorer because we've paid for the extra insulation. Um, if we go to super insulation, um, if we go down to 1.1, for a U value for the walls. Um, this will put the heat loss down to about 80,000 yen per year. Uh, we now have a warm house um, and we've also saved some money. Um, so this is just looking at economics of houses and insulation and adding a little insulation 
and adding a lot of insulation. And when we start to add a lot of insulation, uh, we can save money and we can be more comfortable. Um, a little insulation, if we have no insulation, um, then we're going to be uh, maybe hot and uncomfortable and poor from all the money we spend on heating. A little insulation, we will be warmer, but we don't save any money. Um, a lot of insulation, we're warmer and we save money. Um, that's that in that's in um, that's just a, a graph to show this with a heating bill as the heating bill goes first up and then down, and as the temperature goes up to where it's hot and then down to where it's warm and comfortable, um, because also the walls will be will be a warmer temperature. So let's just look then at the total cost of a house as we look more at economics, which is a, a much more confusing world um, than physics. Um, and the total cost of a house then um, includes the initial cost. It includes the running cost for however long the house lasts. And it includes a demolition cost at the end of the house. Um, and what is the lifetime of a house? Because the lifetime of a house will make a difference to the total cost. Um, if we're trying to work out a cost per year, we need to we need to work out the initial cost and the demolition cost. We need to pay those off every year that we're living in the house. Um, and this is the value of houses in Japan. Um, and you can see rather curiously the value of the house goes below zero and this happens after um, around 20 years or less so we have a kind of vicious cycle in japan for house building um, that often houses are quite cheaply built um, they don't last a very long time because they're they're not built to last a long time um, because they don't last a long time often they're not maintained um, and after about 20 years the house is worth zero so the house gets knocked down and the build, a new house is built but because the house is worth nothing after 20 years the bank um, will not lend you money to build a house because it will be worth nothing in 20 years. So this is a kind of, and because the banks don't lend a lot of money, people don't have a lot of money to spend on houses because most people need to borrow money when they build a house. Um, so this is a kind of vicious circle um, that perpetuates itself. Uh, because buildings have a short lifetime, uh, this means that the running cost is higher. Um, everything we're doing must have a return on investment of 15 years or less. So if you're looking at getting some windows that will have a 20-year payback, um, if your house is going to be knocked down in 20 years, um, you have to wonder, is it worth buying windows that will only pay back after 20 years? If your house is going to last for 50 years, then a 20-year payback sounds like quite good news um, and if it's being knocked down after 20 years um, compared to a house that will last a hundred years um, you may be building four or five times more houses so looking at the long-term economics um, it doesn't make much sense to build a house that will last a short time. Um, it's not going to cost five times more to build a house that will last five times longer. It may cost 20% more, but it's lasting much, much longer. So this doesn't make much sense in the long term. Um, I wonder how do we escape from this cycle? How do we get houses that will last longer? Um, one thing, um, insulation has a relatively quick payback. Um, it does cost more at the beginning, but you can pay back within a couple of years. 
And building houses, somehow we need to build houses that will last a long time. Um, not sure how we do this, but it will save money in the long term and it will make people more comfortable in the short term. Um, it'll make people save money um, in the medium term as well. Um, so, uh, there, they, those are some um, references. And um, that's all. Good luck.